excited to talk to you guys today. It's Friday. Who knows what day it is? It's Friday. <laughs> Somehow I have nothing to do, but I'm running late. Weird. Um, but I'm always running a little bit late. That's kind of a secret about me. I'm always running a little bit late because my head is in the clouds and I'm thinking about things. So, but here I am. And I'm really excited to see y'all. Because today is the first day of May. And you know what that means. It means it's time to reveal the May Reese's Book Club pick. And I'm really excited about this one because I read it and I just, I loved it so much and it just took me to another place. So the May Book Club pick is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. This book, you guys, is so amazing. It's set in 1950s India, and the main character is a 30-year-old woman named Lakshmi, and she has escaped a very abusive husband. This relationship is terrible. She goes to the big city and becomes a henna artist who does henna on the hands of all the very rich and, and fabulous women in the city. And then out of nowhere, her 13-year-old sister and her ex-husband show up on her doorstep. So she is now balancing taking care of her 13-year-old sister and dealing with her abusive ex-husband while she's trying to maintain her business, take care of herself, and become a self-made woman. And it's her struggle with money. It's her struggle with identity. It's her struggle to escape this relationship. And there are so many twists and turns. There's so many amazing characters. I just, it took me to another land and another place and really opened my eyes to a whole other way of life. So, because we're all at home, I thought it might be fun for book club to talk a little bit with the author because she is also at home, staying home and staying healthy and staying safe. And I thought maybe you guys would want to meet her. So. I am going to try and find Alka right now. Here she is. It's all about her amazing book, The Henna Artist. I guess, are you guys reading a lot? Gosh, I'm reading a lot because it's better for me than watching the news because the news is super depressing. So I read a lot. And I want to share with you some of the other books that I'm reading too, because I'm reading a lot of nonfiction. And one is like a classic that I really, I'm, I'm going to reread it and then I want to share with you my thoughts. But I've been rereading The Alchemist. I've been rereading Four Agreements, um, books that really shaped me and gave me my, um, just the, the sort of mentality that I've had to get through life, a lot of positive mental attitude, a lot of thinking, a lot of, um, you know, just trying to be positive in this time. So you guys, if you're just joining me, this is the May book club pick. It is called The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. And it's a fabulous story, but 1950s India, a woman who does henna and all the fabulous wealthy women all over her city. And she's trying to escape an abusive husband, and he ends up on her doorstep. I'm going to try and add the author. She's at home. And let's see if we can do this, see if we can add her in so she can talk a little bit about her book. But you guys, um, if you're following us at Reese's Book Club, Al Joshi is actually going to be talking later on Instagram Live. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? First of all, you look so fabulous. Oh, thank you. Your glasses are fabulous. The whole look. Is this your <laughs> quarantine look? <laughs> Reese, I am so excited to be here with you. Never in my 10 year journey of writing this book did I ever, ever, ever think that I would be in this place with you at this time. Thank you so much for picking the henna artist. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for writing an amazing, beautiful book about one woman's journey 
to be self-made and to discover herself, I would love to hear how you thought of this book. Well, you know, my mother, when she was 18, her father took her out of school and said, I have arranged a marriage for you. And that was to my father. So she was trained to be this very obedient woman and follow everybody in her family's, you know, decision making. So she got married. Within four years, she had three small children. And Reese, her life was never her own. She never got to make any of the major decisions in her life. But she made sure that I, as her only daughter, would always be able to make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. And so she gave such a gift to me with her teachings and just her encouragement for me. She always said I was so brave and so courageous and so kind and um, so smart. And I wanted to give her the gift back. And my gift was to reimagine her life as a woman who could make all the major decisions in her life. And that is what Lakshmi is able to do in the henna artist. Well, I just, I love that story. That's so inspiring because, you know, any, any story that talks about the choices that we have as women or don't have in this country, other countries, I think it's really important to remember and explore the idea that freedom or economic freedom or financial freedom is not a given. It's not a right to a lot of women in the world. Um, and I was wondering, sort of, you were also saying maybe your husband had something to do with this book. I would love to hear that story. Yes. So one day, I had already thought about writing this book and reimagining my mother's life. But one day, he came home with this cool thing called Hindu Altars. And it's the most beautiful book. And so it has in here these little pop-ups of, I don't know if you can see Lakshmi here. Yeah. Um, he is the gorgeous goddess of beauty and wealth. And then on the sides are these beautiful henna hands. Oh my and goodness. that is the moment I knew, first of all, that my main character was going to be named Lakshmi and that she was going to be a henna artist. Because if this is supposed to be a reimagining of my mother's life, and my mother was so creative and so artistic, she could pick up anything that's crafty and just make something beautiful out of it. So I thought, this is something she could do without a formal education. If she had run away from her marriage, then this is something that she could have reinvented herself as. Uh, and also, you know, she was just so good with people. People just loved her. She had light in her eyes. And I don't just mean the color of her eyes, which are the color of Lakshmi's eyes. And I don't know if you can see, but they're like the color of my eyes too. Oh, wow, you have beautiful eyes. Thank you. But, and um, you write you about know, Lakshmi's Lakshmi. eyes are that beautiful color. Yeah. And so, um, and so, you know, she had this ability to do artistic things. And I just thought, this is exactly what she could have done. So yeah. yes, my husband had uh, something to do with my book. <laughs> I and love those illustrations. I would love to see more of them. I mean, it really is a story that Lakshmi tells on each woman's hands. And I was so moved about how she cares for her clients and really cares about their pregnancies, their marriages. And it just really taught, it, it made me remember all the wonderful women in my life who have made me feel beautiful or made me feel seen and how much I'm missing those friendships and those women in my life right now. And I love how yeah. you speak about it so beautifully. Yeah, and I know from reading about you that your mother and your grandmother had a lot to do with your upbringing and sort of the values that you hold today. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one thing that I wanted to make sure women take away from this book is that there are so many different kinds of women and we need to respect all of them, right? So mm -hmm. in the book, there are women who have love marriages. There are women who have arranged marriages. There are women who love uh, the situations that they find themselves in. And there are women who want so desperately to be in a different situation. There are women who want children and women who don't want children. And, um, you know, I think your last pick, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Yes. What she's talking about, yeah, what she's talking about is that women don't have to accept 
the conscripted idea of how they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to like and how they're supposed to raise children. They can set their own agendas for their lives and they can determine their own ways of being. And I think this is, uh, I'm so glad that that was your April pick because yes. I think it feeds right into what Lakshmi is doing in the henna artist. And I think the life that really my mother would have wanted to live, you know, the life of her own choosing. Oh, that's so beautifully said. And I do think it's so important that we explore the stories of all women, that we withhold judgment, that we really open our eyes to other cultures, other ideas, and, and ideas that maybe we don't know everything, right? There are right. so many uh, ways of, of living a life, and you have portrayed so many beautifully in this book. If you're just joining us, the May book pick is The Henna Artist. And I'm being joined by Alka Joshi, the wonderful writer. This is amazing that this book is, um, it just really touched my heart. I also, I have such a soft spot for her little sister who has just oh. come to live with her. And I think a lot of people are living with their siblings right now in a sort of, you know, unorthodox yes. way that they're just unexpected. And um, I love the relationship. Do you, do you have a sister of your own? You know, I don't. I always wanted to have a sister. I always asked my mom, could I have a sister? And before I realized how babies are actually made. <laughs> mm. And so what I do have though, are two amazing brothers. I have an older brother and I have a younger brother and they have been on this journey with me throughout the process. They have added to this book. My father has added so much to this book. I mean, my dad has such an encyclopedic knowledge of that time period because both my parents were born before independence. They lived through independence. And then we were all in India at the time they got married, which was the year 1955, very wow. significant. Yeah. And then we were in India until, you know, I was nine and my brothers were 11 and eight, and then we moved away. So my dad is one of the people whom Prime Minister Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, he said to all the young men, hey, you guys, I want you to go out and be engineers and be architects, and I want you to learn from the West, bring back the good ideas, and apply them to India and help rebuild India. And my father heard that call, and he became a civil engineer. And so he was in the state of Rajasthan. He was building a lot of roads and bridges and dams and all kind of infrastructure. Oh, wow. So, I just, it makes me long to travel. I love, I've only been to Rajasthan once in my life, but it is just filled with color and beauty. And you describe it so beautifully in this book. Alka, I just wanna, I wanna, we're gonna probably wrap it up soon, but I just wanna know, how are you staying above water right now? How are you staying so resilient? And your book talks about female resilience and how the human yes. spirit is so strong, but maybe talk a little bit about that. Well, I think that first of all, change is good. I think that whenever change happens, we fear it, right? But we don't have to fear it. I think with every negative thing that, ha that happens, there's also something truly positive that comes out of it. And I think right now, maybe when, if we're in fear, we're thinking of only the negative things that are happening. But think about how clean the air is. Think about how clean our water is now that nobody is you know, using a lot of the outdoor um, resources that we have. All the wildlife is coming back to claim its territory. And I think this is a great time for us to read, right? Because we're at home and what a great time to get the kids to read and for, the, you know, for us to reconnect with children that are in our home. And you know, I'm sure you're finding this with all your kids, it's like, okay, how do I keep them busy? How do I you know, um, connect to them in a different way than I did before? So I think anytime there is change, it doesn't have to be bad. There's so much good. And if we can just focus on the good, then um, our lives are just so much better. And can I just say in closing that I still remember this speech that you made when you won the Best Actress Award in <sighs> your, for your performance for Walk the Line. And I, I hope I don't cry when I say this, oh, because it, me cry. It, it, it meant so much to me that at the very end, what you said was, I just want to matter. 
I just want to matter in this world. And I think that I really want to matter in this world too. I mean, you took the words and you made them come alive for me. And so, you know, I don't have children, but I have given birth to this book. And um, I just hope that this is the legacy that I leave. So thank you, Reese, for helping me make that happen. Well, Alta, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much for that compliment. I, I do think about it all the time. My grandma always just said she wanted to matter. And I think you have really done something that makes people really see characters that matter. And I love that your mother is in this book. You can feel it on every page. Oh, you're a doll. Thank you so what a, much. What a pleasure to speak with you this morning. I know you're going to be going over to Reese's Book Club and doing a live over there. So if people have questions for you, now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us crying in the morning. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. You have a beautiful heart. And you're, 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 if people are just joining us, this is the May book pick, The Henna Artist. Read it, follow along with us at Reese's Book Club. We love sharing with you. And Alka and I will be talking all month about her incredible book. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, right. everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.